Wow. The impact of the first fragment of comet Shoemaker-Levy occurred just over an hour ago, but as yet astronomers haven't been able to see if it left any visible trace in Jupiter's atmosphere. The Hubble Space Telescope was observing, but it's expected to be about two hours before an image can be processed. British amateur astronomers have also been watching, but observing conditions have been poor, and as yet, no one has reported seeing anything. Oh, it's just um, unfortunate. Hmm. Never mind, try again tomorrow. Yep. And uh, the day after that, the day after that, until it's mm. all over. Mm. Yeah. As expected, very shortly after impact, reports of unusual activity on Jupiter are coming in from ground-based telescopes in other countries. What are we getting now? Uh, we're just getting news from uh, Spain. And what they say? Um, I don't know if I should talk about this. <laughs> you can talk to I me. Just want, it's not going I don't know. What's the, what do you think the story is, Keith, about uh, whether or not we should be saying anything about the news from Spain? It's not us. I mean, I think it's for us yeah, to say, us. right? So. Yeah. I mean, should we, we shouldn't be talking about it, right? right. I mean, yeah. Right. Why not? Just because uh, it, we're we're operating from hearsay right now, basically, and, and we don't really know exactly what they saw, and, and so we could we could just spread mis misinformation. Somebody in Japan has reported that they've seen radio waves from Jupiter increasing by a hundred times. Factor ten is what I heard. Well, <laughs> we're going to verify. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. But uh, apparently, uh, an, actual, it wasn't a an actual spot, a plume, a plume has been observed in the infrared in the methane band and, and a spot uh, on Jupiter. Now, this, this is not yet released. It's not for publication. Very excited. Okay. We, we need, just we want the confirmation yet. Get a confirmation with, uh, where did Hal go? The only way to get confirmation is to contact the Central Bureau for Astronomical Telegrams, always the first to receive word on new observations. So we need we need to get a uh, phone somewhere we can get to Brian. Um, how about that room you were in? You could call from there. Yeah, do you remember Brian's number off the top of yes, your head? Yes, I do. Do you, got, do you have it? 617. 617, right. 495-7244. What is it, 617? I think it's 617. That's 617 or 619. I think 617, isn't it? Uh, see, I better check to see how we can, we can get out. Uh, I wonder if... Uh, so we, we have to find out how to dial out on this. Ooh, get a dial line. Dial line? Dial yeah. line. Um, I need What's to, uh, the Spanish room? And, uh, <laughs> um, report of a positive detection. This way. <laughs> what is that? Oh, just a positive what, detection? What kind of positive? <laughs> Guys. What is the positive detection? Um, it's up on my... Oh, no, you can't go upstairs. There was just a report that uh, Calor Alto, the observatory, the 3.5 meter telescope there, they observed with an infrared camera, and they reported seeing a plume brighter than Io. Really? Mm hmm And a spot? Um, no spot, just a plume. That's all the report no, said. So, spot. Not in that report, that, not the email report. No. It didn't say that. What does so. that mean? <laughs> means we're <laughs> real excited to see the HST data at 8 o'clock tonight. And uh, I got to leave now. <laughs> I'm calling you from the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute, uh, and so uh, they're organizing their first conference this evening at 7:30 here. And I, wa I wondered whether then you know whether it'd be legitimate to mention that at that time. We wouldn't want we wouldn't want to anticipate the uh, circular, but if it's out, then then, then we could talk about it. Oh right. Oh, they've probably been hounding him. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try logging in then later. Yeah. Okie doke. Thanks much. All righty. Bye bye. He thinks he'll have the circular out within and, an hour. And? Within an hour. Yeah. So we can talk about it. Yeah. And what yeah. are we going to well, talk about? What happened? Well, I think we got to see what it says. <laughs> <laughs>
There's another one. Unable to contain their excitement, they find a computer in the canteen and manage to break into the astronomer's global information network. I want to get there's another um, there is another report. I'm trying to find that. Um, <clears throat> All right, let's ten. That's a different okay. one. Okay, ten, uh, ten microns. That's yeah, a different one. Ten yeah. microns. So, so it's, a it's in one. the ten micron band. Yeah, that's a different one. Yeah, the ten microns is a different one. Okay, I'm gonna put that down. <laughs> That's it. Now that's the beautiful. knot. Yeah. The knot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a different one. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mario Livio. Hi, Mario. <laughs> yes, I, am. <laughs> I work here. So. <laughs> it's my telescope. So, direct observation of the plume on Jupiter. It's been seen in Chile and Spain. Two different wavelengths, 10 microns and 2.3 microns. Is this, we have information in 2.3 microns, it's brighter than EO. I mean, it's bright. Just the kind of headline the media have been looking for. With Hubble's definitive images still on their way through space, Gene decides there is enough information to go public, unaware of events one floor below. <laughs> Look at that. Look at Good evening. Welcome to the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. The impact of the first fragment occurred uh, earlier this afternoon at about 3.54, and scientists around the world participating in the NASA National Science Foundation observing campaign, as well as virtually every other telescope and observatory around the world have been watching. Please allow us this way to do it. We should all take these reports very carefully and cautiously at this time. They need to be confirmed by other observers. But now remember, we're observing fragment A, which is one of the small fragments. If these reports are correct, then you can expect a good show for every telescopically observed nucleus. We're going to see things, and we're going to learn a lot. That's the good news tonight. Let me now uh, turn the podium over to my wife, Carolyn. We'll talk a little bit about the discovery. The discovery of Comet Shoemaker Levy 9. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we could do? We could, just, we could print out the beat and use them in the press. We're going to go up there and try to do a better job. But we have very limited time. Do we have a target? We should go up the right now. And that's why it's flashing. No, no, no. no. It's it's I'd like to introduce Dr. Heidi Hamill. This is a methane filter at 889. Do you have a pencil or a pen or something? Yes. <laughs> I don't even have a piece of cardboard pencil. Okay, we, we just blew up a section of the planet. This is the southern pole here. You see there's a little, there's a bright streak. See that bright streak? And around the edge of the streak, there's some other stuff. It was not there the day before. It's a new feature on Jupiter, and we're going to have 20 more of them. It delivered. How about it? <laughs> yeah. oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> All these uh, theorists who are, you know, complaining about the fizzle, you know, that we're going to have a fizzle. Uh, show them the door. And then it just flattened out. So that's when we knew that it was real. 